Hey, very good afternoon to all the students. So, uh, how are I, how is everyone? Are you okay? So, I've seen uh, we have 23 students already joining us. Uh, there are still eight of you uh, still uh, coming in soon. So, basically, uh, I can see many of you have already arrived. I hope uh, for this afternoon, uh, you have the energy to study together with me about this computer architecture. Uh, we have already studied many things for the last two weeks. So basically, these are the chapters that we have completed. Uh, the first chapters about the performance, and then the second chapters about the, uh, the instruction set architecture. So I believe uh, you have already have the understand, uh, understanding about the, the computer architectures. So uh, when we have time, we will slowly uh, discuss about the assembly language. Uh, for today, we will be discussing about the chapter number three. Uh, before I start, uh, do you have any question you want to ask me, uh, whether about your assignment or about your tutorial, etc.? Uh, you can let me know uh, before I start the lecture. By the way, can you hear my voice fairly? I assume yes, right? Ah, yeah, okay. Watching, uh, yeah. Okay, thank you for your response. And Shin Shen say yes. Uh. So we are going to start our lecture on the pipelining soon. Uh, I think our lectures for the chapter number three, I will take like about one hour uh, to describe maybe one hour, one hour and a half. Then later we'll discuss about some examples. If we have time, you will discuss a little bit about the assembly language. Okay, so uh, we, we are going to start now, even though some of you haven't come yet. Uh, we will uh, usually we'll start by uh, 205. We'll let you to have some time to come in and take a rest first. Uh, basically, computer is a very interesting object for some of the uh, students. Basically, uh, because computers is very uh, powerful, they can do many things. They are used in almost all the industries at home at school, and now even if you are doing online class, uh, you're attending an online class, you also need to uh, use your computer. That's why people might wonder that computer is a very, very high technology product. Uh, but if you know how to design a computer, then you will know what is inside the computer, right? So it's a very interesting topic that you might want to learn. So today we are going to learn about a third uh, topic, which is about the pipelining. For your information, we have about nine chapters. So for today, we are accepting the third chapters. Uh, my target is every week, we will roughly finish one chapter. Uh, then by nine weeks, we can finish nine chapters uh, together with all the tutorials, etc. The rest of the weeks, we can use it to do the test or we do the revisions. And also we can do some uh, uh, assignments, etc. Okay, so uh, let's uh, for, without further ado, uh, let me uh, start my chapter number three, which is a pipelining. As you can see, we have twenty two pages, uh, so I'm going to uh, uh, brief you through these twenty two uh, pages of information. Uh, let me start the presentation. Yeah? Okay. Uh, today we are going to talk about a very very important uh, topic in the computers. Basically, uh, what is inside the computer? Basically, a uh, computer you can use some programming language, uh, or we call it assembly language to program it, right? We have the something like this. This is for the Intel X zero X six. So let's say you have the Move AH uh, five. And then interrupt 21 fish. So these two are actually the programming language, assembly language. Okay, we call these two assembly language. But inside computer, what does uh, the computer actually do for these two instructions? Basically, uh, the first thing we must know that in the computer, there are many parts. 
the first part is actually the register. There are many registers. So we have the A, register A, X, BX, and also we have the register CX, and also DX. And we have many other general purpose registers. Uh, these are the four registers which, are, we, we, which we use to actually program our computers. So inside the AX, uh, there are two parts, which is the A, H, and A, low. OK? So basically, what does it mean by this uh, move A, H, 5, H? It means that inside your memory, you have this uh, instruction, right? OK? Uh, let's say you have the move. Uh, I'm talking, uh, I'm just uh, representing this in words. Uh, basically, these are all in binary. Let's say if you have AH5. For example, uh, when your program counter, this is your PC program counter, point to this address. Okay, point to this address. Of course, there are many other address inside this memory. Uh. This is memory. Okay, so this PC is a program counter pointing to this memory address. This is the RAM, uh, memory means the RAM. Okay. What does it, uh, the computer do is, they will take out this five. Okay, five hexa, uh, not five, uh, five hexa. Uh, they will channel through some electrical circuits, okay, and go to uh, this AH, sorry, uh, this is the, uh, AH. Uh, they will go to the AH. How can they do this? Okay, how can they do uh, transfer the data for the from the 5H to the AH? Uh, basically, they are using some wires uh, here. Okay, these wires are actually some metals. Uh. So this uh, maybe is the uh, 8 bits. There are many uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh. Okay, there are 8 of them. Uh, 8 of them. So they are coming until here. So this is also 8 bits. Okay, so this 5H will be transferred from the memory from your instruction. Uh, let's say this is, let's say if this is an immediate, uh, let's say this is immediate. Uh, for example, if we have the immediate, uh, okay, immediate numbers, this 5H will be transferred directly to the edge. How can that do this? Uh, so at this line, basically there will have some control. Okay, have, you have already learned all the, I think you have already learned many of the uh, circuits, right? Okay, you have the, all these circuits, right? Okay, let's say you want to move the data here. Let's say here is one. Here we don't know what is the, the value here. Let's say you want the one to go to here. What can you put here? You put a zero here. So this is active low. So you will be able to uh, transfer the data from here, 5H to the AH. In this case, you will be able to transfer the data. Uh, so who control this one, the control signals? Okay, there is a control unit. Yeah. Control unit is actually will analyze your this move AH, and then they will send the signal to this control, uh, to this uh, components. This is a PMOS or NMOS over here. So, once the signal is given to here, then the signal can pass through. Okay, so all these things we call uh, this structure. If you learn, I see uh, this is called a cascade. Okay, cascade. Yeah. Uh, of course, cascade usually we use the NMOS. Uh, okay, so uh, this is uh, the dis description about the actual operation in a computer. Basically, all those are uh, electronic devices like the NMOS, PMOS, uh, wires, etc. So control unit will have to determine which, which uh, passcode has to be turned on so that the data can be transferred to the other side. Okay, so this is how uh, it can be done. So for memory, it can be transferred to the register through the control unit. Of course, uh, there is no arithmetic logic unit uh, happen here. Okay, our ALU operation is not here. So today we are going to describe about the pipelining. For the pipelining, basically uh, they want to split the one instruction 
what instruction to split into many different micro instruction. So this is one instruction. Huh? Okay, one instruction. Okay, they want to split this one instruction into many micro, uh, micro instruction. Uh, sorry, micro instruction. Huh? So uh, many one to uh, let's say we have many micro instruction over here. Okay, micro instruction. Uh, let me put properly. Yeah. So we have the instruction one, micro instruction two, micro instruction uh, three, micro instruction four, and also micro instruction five. One, two, three, four, five. So what is this instruction? Okay, so what is the micro instruction from here to here? Okay, what is the micro instruction from here to here? So uh, the micro instruction say that the memory has to go to go to AH. Okay, so this will be the micro instruction. Uh, from here, there will come uh, the signal will be C1. So you have to turn on the signal C1. So here you have the signal of the C1. So it's basically the uh, operation inside the computer. This is a micro instruction. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, of course, we are not going to uh, learn a lot about this micro instruction, but this is what happened inside the computers. One instruction actually can be broken into many micro instructions. Today, we are going to learn the pipelining. What is the pipelining? And also, second one, the major part of pipelining structural hazards. Okay, for example, let's say you uh, you join some uh, school sports events, right? Uh, some people, let's say you have some people running. Uh, okay, when you come to here, then you have to jump. Then only you can go through this harder, right? Uh, so what is the major harder of pipelining structural hazards? Okay, what will happen if you do the pipelining? Uh, there are some uh, problems. The first one is about the data. The second is about the control. Okay, we have the problem about this hash. Okay, and then we also have the problem about the control signal here. Uh, this is what is meant by this. Uh. So how is pipelining implemented? How do you implement? Uh, later we will learn about this. And what makes the pipelining to implement? Okay, what makes it very hard to implement? Basically, all our processor uses, uh, all our processor use this pipelining. Uh, no doubts, uh, uh, no computer uh, that do not use this, does not use this uh, pipelining, uh, except those uh, ancient computers. Uh, okay, so the first one is extending the MIPS. Uh, MIPS is a uh, type of the microprocessor pipeline to handle multi-cycle operations. So don't worry, we, I'm going to give you a 15 minute rest in the middle of the two hours. So right now, let us start. Uh, what is pipelining? Okay, pipelining. Uh, pipelining is actually a way to speed up execution of instructions. Uh, the concept is very uh, simple. Okay, the key idea is to overlap the execution of multiple instructions or in this case is uh, instruction and micro instructions as well, okay? This is a key idea. So what is a pipelining? For example, right now, uh, I believe all of you have come back to your hometown. You are meeting your parents every day. So uh, your clothes has been uh, washed by maybe your parents. Some of you have already started to wash the uh, clothes yourself because your parents might say, Oh, you come, you stay here for so long already, then you better do your own homework, lah, so that your parent won't be so tired. Lah. So, okay, for example, let's say you haven't come back to your home and you're still in Sata Park, then suddenly you have some dirty clothes. You want to give uh, to the Dobby to let the Dobby to uh, wash the clothes for you, okay? Uh, because you have not washed the clothes for a very long time, so you have uh, one, three, uh, a, B, C, D, uh, so, okay. Okay, so this is a, a basket of clothes. Uh. Okay, for example, this is the laundry example you send to Joby. Uh, you send a lawn, uh, to laundry. So, and Brian, Kathy, and Dave. Okay, these four person, uh, 
uh, each have one lot, one lot of clothes. Okay, we have uh, a lot of clothes. Uh, so to wash, to dry, and to fold. Okay, so now uh, the washer, they have only one washer. Okay, one um, um, washing machine takes about 30 minutes. So once you put in, uh, when you need to pick up, it will spend you 30 minutes. Okay, then uh, because uh, after that, you will send the clothes to a dryer. Okay, dryer will take 40 minutes. Okay, and then uh, another worker uh, sitting here, then he, need to, he or she need to fold your coat and it will take 20 minutes to flow one uh, load of coat. Okay, so total, how, how many minutes are there? 30 plus 40 plus 20. How many minutes? Can anyone answer me how many minutes? Anyone? How many minutes are there? You have uh, three, uh, you have one, uh, three processors. Anyone? Let me see. Uh. Anyone can answer or see the chat box also can? 30 minutes for washing machine, uh, 40 minutes for your dryer, and 30 minutes to fold. How many minutes together? 30 minutes to share. Yeah, correct, very good. Let's keep a very encouraging point to be able to answer this. Okay, there are 90 minutes. So what uh, what does it mean? Okay, you need 90 minutes. Huh? So let's say if you have four lots of code, so if you wait 90 minutes for one cycle of the process to finish, so four of them multiply 90 minutes. Total time is 360 minutes. So this is the total time. The total time required for you to complete this process is 360 minutes. Ah, now you have one problem. If you need to send 360 minutes to complete four, uh, code, uh, four loads of code, uh, okay, it will be very time consuming, right? You can see uh, this one, what is the name? Uh? N, okay, let's say uh, N uh, come here, okay, N come here, N come here, so, okay, N come here, and then uh, she wash the clothes, uh, then it spent 90 minutes, and then after that, uh, Ben, right, it's a, a Brian, uh, Brian, not Ben, uh. Brian come here, okay, this one, Brian come here, also, uh, Okay, right now, now, now people like to draw the, the, the human like this. Huh? Yeah, the, all the cartoons like this. Huh? Okay, so he, he come here, Brian come here, and then he wash the clothes. So what is the problem about these things, this, this uh, process? It's very, very time consuming. And then you waste the resource. Okay, you can see uh, Brian after that, C, D, Dave come here, and then Kathy also come here. Okay, so you can observe that for the first 30 minutes, the washing machine has completed. There's no jobs here when this is running. So it's better that Brian will be able to use this washing machine right away, right? Before uh, the whole task complete, right? So this is actually the concept of the pipelining. Okay, so sequential laundry takes six hours for four loads. Okay, this is sequential uh, laundry that takes six hours because each person takes 90 minutes. Okay, but if they learn how to do pipelining, okay, they do pipelining. So how long does the laundry take? Okay, let's see here. So once, once the Anna completed the first process, then the Brian can directly throw the code into the washing machine. Okay, after that, when and come to here and let the workers here to fold the clothes. So uh, Brian can actually take out the clothes and put into the dryer. Okay, and then etc. So if they are learning this uh, pipelining, they will be able to complete four loads uh, in about three and a half hours. So this is the meaning of pipelining. So pipelining means you start work as soon as possible.
before uh before even before the next process is completed so in order to do this this process has to, has to be split into three different processes one process to uh, process two and process three this is the meaning of the uh cut dynamic Okay, so what is the lesson that we learned in this pipelining? Pipelining does not help, okay, the latency of a single task. For example, only I need to watch the code. So you will still need to spend 90 minutes. So it only helps to increase the throughput of the entire workload. So second, pipeline rate limited by slowest pipeline stage, okay? So let's say your pipeline stage is uh, slowest one is for 40 minutes here. It will be slowest by this. And then multiple tasks operating simultaneously. And then potential speed up is how many pipe stage that you can actually speed into. And then unbalanced lines of pipe stages reduces the speed up. So let's say you have the 30, 40, 20 here. So let's say it's unbalanced. So you have to wait, lah. all have to wait 40 minutes. So this is the meaning. Lah. And time to fill pipeline and time to drain it reduces speed up. Okay, so let's say uh, uh, even though he has finished, uh, so you still need to take some time, take it out, and then give to the folder, right? Uh, so this is the meaning. You still need to transfer it. So let us go to the computer. So this is actually the computer. Uh, this is a very old computer. We call it MIPS. Okay, MIPS computer. MIPS computer is a very, very famous computer for computer uh, students. Uh. So we have the micro. Uh, this is called a microprocessor without interlock uh, pipeline stages. Okay. That means that for the MIPS, MIPS processor, you can speak one instruction. Let's say you have the move. A H, uh, uh, let's say four lah, Okay, you can actually move, uh, split this instruction into four stages. Okay, four stages. So we have the first stages we call it instruction flash, and then second stages we call it instruction decode or register flash, and third one is execute address or address calculation. The fourth one is memory access. And the fifth one is drive back. So this is basically the whole computers. Okay, so let us look at this. Uh. This is a symbol of the ALU. And uh, this is actually uh, a little you see. Uh. Uh, this diagram is not clear yet. So basically there are five stages uh, in the pipeline. Okay, let us memorize all these five stages. Uh, uh, because these five stages are very, very important. It happens everywhere. The first one is instruction fetch. Uh, let me use a different uh, colors. Okay, instruction fetch. This is instruction fetch. And then after that, we go to instruction decode and register fetch. And third one is execute or address calculation. Uh, fourth one is memory address. And then uh, fifth one is right back. Okay, let us uh, continue. We will discuss one by one because all this, we call them, uh, how do we name it? Uh? Okay, how do we name it? Let me change the color. We can name this or micro operation or micro instructions. Okay, micro operation or micro instructions. Okay, these are micro instruction, instruction fetch. And then we have micro instruction two, micro instruction three, and micro instruction four, and micro instruction five. Okay, how to pipeline a digital system in micro processor? Okay, in order for you to pipeline a digital system, this is basically the whole process of the digital system in a microprocessor. It takes one, nanosecond, nanosecond to complete one process. Okay, the key idea is to break the big computation into pieces. We want, we do not want to stick the washing machine, wash uh, dryer and 
also uh, folder together, right? We want to split them up so that they can do separate job. Okay. We split each piece with a pipeline register. Uh, so this is actually the pipeline register that have been put uh, when you split the uh, one nanosecond into 200 picosecond everywhere. Okay, so this is actually the, uh, we call it pipeline register. This is the extra register that we must have in order for us to uh, do the pipelining. Okay, why do we do this? Uh, because it's faster for repeated computation. Uh, for no pipeline, you when you do one move operation, you spend you one nanosecond. But if you pipeline, okay, one operation finish uh, average in every 20 picoseconds, means you can do it five times faster, okay? Of, of course, uh, the, all the digital components will work harder, yeah? Because uh, pipelining, all of them have to work very hard. Uh, after they finish, they already have to move into the next stage, yeah? okay? Okay, now, the comments about this pipelining. Pipelining, uh, they can increase the throughput. Okay, very good. You can increase the throughput, but not the latency for one single process. Okay, for one single process, uh, it cannot uh, improve the time. Okay, it cannot improve the time. So the answer available every 200 picoseconds, but if you only need to do one uh, instruction, then still take one nanosecond. Okay, uh, this is actually the comments about pipelining, but the limitation is the computation must be divisible into stages. If you cannot divide them, you cannot do it. And then pipeline register will add the overhead. Okay, uh, because you can see, uh, to do pipeline, you need the pipeline registers over here. One, two, three, four. Okay, so this is about the pipelining. Okay, now recall the five very, very important micro instruction or micro operation inside the computer, which you can do, use to do pipelining. The first one is instruction fetch. Okay, remember, you must memorize. Huh? First stage, instruction fetch. Okay, second, after you fetch the instruction, what you do? Uh, you fetch the instruction, uh, let's say you fetch one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, one. Uh, let's say 8-bit computer, uh, we don't want to do very heavy. Uh. Okay, this is the instruction. Let's say uh, this is more H2, uh, okay. Uh. For example, uh, this one machine code, uh, this is machine code. Uh, this is assembly code, uh, assembly code. So this machine code, you need to fetch it. So what you do is, you send the control signal to the packet. Okay, all this packet, uh, control signal. You have to send this signal C1 to the packet. For example, you have 8B. You must be able to send this from the instruction register over here, go through this packet. Of course, this was, this is also A, uh, maybe uh, A, uh, okay, come here, A. So this one must be fetched to the place that you need. Okay, a register, uh, instruction, uh, sorry, this is memory, uh, this is memory. You must be able to fetch the memory content from the memory, this, uh, uh, one zero one zero one zero one zero one one. Uh. All this must be able to push to the instruction register. Okay, so you send the signal C one. You say fetch. So this is the first instruction. Instruction fetch. So from the memory, and then you go to the instruction register. The second one. Uh, once it go into the uh instruction register, need to decode it. Decode means what is the meaning of decode? Decode means you want to break this instruction, move AH into many control signals, which is C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. This is called the instruction decode. After that, you read some registers. Okay, let's say you have the registers, move AH. So you will go and turn on the C6, for example. C6, let's say it will turn on the register, target for the register. The register can receive some information from your instruction register so and register rate so this is the second uh, micro instruction the third one will be execution operation now what you do move the two to ah so from here the two is here 
So he will go through some pass kit, and then he had to go to the AH, let's say AH is over here. So uh, this A, la, AH is uh, here, let's say, he has to go to here. So you have to turn on this pass kit. Okay, you have to, uh, this instruction may be C6. You turn on the pass kit, then we do the, uh, execute the operation, or calculate the address, let's say it's like indirect, or it's a direct, or it's a base. Uh, addressing mode, so you have to do extra. Sometimes it will not finish within one cycle. You have to go extra cycle for the indirect base addressing mode. Then after that, what happened? Okay, uh, first stage will be memory access. Uh, for our case, we don't need uh, because move AH2 does not read uh, right to the memory. So in this case, it will do the memory access and then write the result into the register. Okay, for example, uh, let's say they do move to H, uh, okay, let's say this is the address. Uh, so they will need to, uh, they will need to access to the memory and then write this information into the register, uh, write result into register and access the memory. Okay, so these are the five stages that you must be able to memorize. Okay, because this is very important for all the computer architecture students. You must know all these five stages of a computer. Okay, so now review. For a single cycle processor, uh, all the five steps done in one single clock cycle. Okay, so dedicated hardware required for each step. So for the single cycle computer, all five steps here, basically they do in one cycle, clock cycles. Uh, you still remember when we learned chapter one, we have the clock cycle. So for all of these instructions, micro instructions, you have to do it in one cycle. But what happened? Let's say single cycle processor. You cannot use indirect. La. Okay, indirect addressing mode, you need more than one clock cycle. You cannot finish within one clock cycle. So many things will need more than one clock cycle. Okay, some operation will need more than one cycle. So for single cycle processor, you can do like this. Okay, you can do uh, five steps in one instructions. So this five step, we call it micro instruction, which is instruction fresh, instruction decode, execute operation, memory access, and write result. Uh, okay, so these are the five micro instructions in computers. Huh? It's used everywhere, in, including uh, including the Intel X0, X66. Okay, now we are going to see very clearly what is inside a computer. For example, in future, but you need to design your own computer, or let's say you work for Intel. Uh, actually, you have some seniors actually now working with Intel uh, uh, in Penang. Uh. So they are very, very familiar with all this uh, computer already. And also some of the students have already gone to Huawei. As you know, Huawei is also a very uh, big electronics company. So uh, they, they need to know all about these electronics things. So when you learn your digital electronics, you also learn about your IC layout design. Uh, you learn many of these things, but computer need all this knowledge for you to design. Okay, so first, in the instruction fetch, micro instruction, you will have one multiplexer. Okay, multiplexer. And then you have one program counter register. Then this connect to the instruction uh, memory. Okay, this is a uh, PC address, okay, instruction memory. Then we go to this one, registers. Okay, then we have the add here. So this is the RAM. Uh, usually this one is a RAM. So the PC will, will select the RAM, okay, through the multiplexer. Uh, so this instruction, uh, this, uh, what is this? This is actually the ALU, arithmetic logic unit. Okay, arithmetic logic unit. Uh, arithmetic logic unit. Okay, so ALU. In short, it's called the ALU. So after that, the second stage, which is instruction decode and register file rate. It has uh, a lot of registers. So this register uh, is actually. Uh, why we need to use it? For example, let's say you have a move. I always use this thing instruction uh, so that you, you get what I mean. Uh. 
So first, you have the move H to H. So program counter actually will point to, uh, program counter will point to this address. Uh, let's say this address. So we have the move H to H. So after that, uh, after here, then you have the uh, access to the memory. Then after that, you need to do the instruction decode. Uh, instruction decode, then you will select a H. Okay. Then you have also have the sign extend uh, for 16 bit to 32 bit. Then you have another multiplexer and the third uh, micro instruction, which is used to execute. In order to execute, you need another ALU here, arithmetic logic unit. Then we have the shift operation here and multiplexer here and another ALU here. So when you see this symbol, uh, uh, what is this symbol? This symbol is an ALU. Uh, very funny, uh, this is a symbol of ALU already. Uh, because, uh, the, uh, usually you have, let's say you have five, six, uh, you have the operation plus, then you should get 11, right? So this is the symbol for the ALU. The first thing will be memory access. Uh, you need to access the memory again, okay? Memory, data memory, this is the instruction memory. So basically these two sometimes are the same, uh, okay? Okay, then after that we go to a multiplexer, uh, to write back, so write back, uh, write back, and then to register. So this is basically the whole digital electronic design for a computer. It looks like very, very complex, but actually this is what it means. Uh. If you can actually, if you are interested, uh, you can actually download the mix processor from the internet. Uh, they already designed the full uh, IC layout for the mix processor. So you can actually download them and then open and then see how the uh, computer can be designed. Okay, there are five micro instructions. I've already told you the, they are IF, ID, EX, memory, and WB, right back. Okay, now, what is the, um, uh, this micro instructions, okay? So now, uh, now we come to really the micro instructions here, micro operations, uh, it's called micro operation. We have micro instruction, one, two, three, four, five. After that, we go to micro operation, yes, can, can be split into two. What is the micro operation for the instruction fetch? You send out the PC, and fetch the instruction from the memory into the instruction. So instruction register, and then increment the increment the PC by four, program counter by four, to address the next sequential instruction. And then instruction register hold the instruction that will be used in the next stage. So MPC next program counter. This is next program counter. Next program counter hold the value of the next PC. So what control signal that you need to do? What is the micro operations that you need to do here? So pass to the next stage. So you see, first thing, you need to enable the pass gate. Uh, let's say you have a control signal. Enable the pass gate so that it can pass the information from the memory of the address in PC going to instruction register. Then after that, the next PC, you will have to be equal to PC current program counter plus four. This is a 32-bit, uh, 32-bit register because that's why they add four. Uh, uh, they are four bytes. Uh, four bytes means 32-bit. Uh, 32-bit 32 uh, MIPS processor. So now you have to do these two control signal. What does this mean? You have to, uh, you have to go to send this to this. So I will turn on the this one, okay, you have to turn on this and then the next PC, MPC, uh, you have to move into here. Uh, it's somewhere else, uh, MPC. So you have to move into here. So these are the two micro operation. Okay, you have micro instruction, then you go to micro operation. So this eventually will become C6, uh, CA, something like this, uh, it's two signals. You must send this, okay? This is the first micro instruction. Then we go to the second micro instruction, the micro instruction is you will turn the register uh, from here to A and B, and then uh, this one to the uh, immediate. Okay, immediate. So this is the instruction decode and register fetch cycle. 
So for the second one, you need to do the instruction decode. So you will just uh, passing uh, using the using the micro operation over here. Okay, when we have time, you come back here and explain more. So basically, the instruction decode is to decode the instruction and assess the register file to read the register. So register value must be able to decode into the uh, meaningful manner. Uh, the outputs of the general purpose registers are read into two temporary registers, A and B. Okay, so when they are uh, put into here, then they will be able to use it. So we extend the sign of lower 16 bit to the instruction register. This, uh, this is the third one. Third one is the execute address calculation. So there, turn on the A function B to the A. So let's say you have A plus B, then we have to enable this function, arithmetic logic unit. Then after that, they set the con, uh, con uh, this one, con, con uh, into con into the zero. So condition register into zero. Okay. So here we perform an operation for an ALU or an address calculation. So if an ALU actually do the operation, address calculation, figure out how to uh, obtain the address and stash away the location of that address for the next cycle. Okay. So this is uh, third one. So fourth one is memory access. So this is actually the micro operations. A equals to memory. So you send the memory to this A register. Or you send the A, uh, the memory become the A. Okay. So the fifth one is about the write back. So now you have the A and B register. Now you write it back to the register. So write back to the register. So we are almost done, don't worry. So this is the basic line for the mix processor. Mix processor is a very famous processor for computer students. So this is actually architectural. So I, I believe in digital electronics, you learn how to design ALU, adder, multiplexer, uh, register as well, right? Right, and uh, I think you, you already learned this, right? Have you learned Pascal? Anyone has already learned Pascal? This one. Maybe you learn it when you have the IC class. Huh? Uh, this is NMOS. Huh? NMOS is also a Pascal. Huh? Uh, for example, let's say, but this one got a problem. Huh? Because if you have NMOS only, huh, you have a problem. So what people usually do is uh, they have the N, okay? N over here. Oh. Uh, I think I cannot write it here. So let's say huh, if you have Pascal over here, so you have like this, right? So you will lose some, uh, Power. So what people do is actually they will have another basket which is opposite. So plus and minus also they can do that. Then they can use an inverter. Okay, inverter. Then uh, one go to here and then another one they go to here. Okay. So this is how they do that. The control signal uh, C five uh, like that. Then they will send the signal from here to here. Okay. So this is how to design. How, how to make the control signal work. Uh. That's why the C5 signal will be here. So you can see that this is actually the basic pipeline for the mix. People don't want to implement uh, the system without pipelining because you can definitely do the instruction four or five times faster. So there's no point that you implement one pipeline, uh, one pipeline computer, yeah? So, so this is called, what is this? This is actually called the data path. So data part is pipeline by adding a set of registers, one between each pair of the pipe stages. So there will be registered one, two, three, four, pipeline register inside the digital electronic circuit of a computer. So this all this four, we call, we give it a name. If you call it a pipeline register also can, but there is a name. We call it latches. There are latches between each stage provide, uh, provide pipe uh, lining. I believe when you learn digital electronics, you learn check out FIFA, right? Uh, what else, what other FIFA you, you learn? Uh, RS, uh, set and reset, FIFA, uh, et cetera. So this all I used to design this uh, ledgers. Uh. So we have ledgers, right, ledgers. Okay, now we are almost the end. Uh. So this is a basic pipeline for the mix. Remember, we have five stages. 
instruction fetch, instruction decode, and then uh, ALU, then memory access, and then write back. Now, I believe all of you already can memorize because I've said it for 10 times already, right? Uh, now I say it another one more time. Huh? So now you have the cycle number one, you have the fetch instruction, then after that, you have the instruction decode. Oh, sorry, this one register also, uh, instruction decode are same thing. Huh? So after that, we go to the ALU, uh, arithmetic logic unit, then memory access, then we go back, go to the right back. So in the MIPS, the basic pipeline for the MIPS can be uh, channel to, uh, can be used to run five instructions at one time. So at this time, you can see uh, many, uh, many four, uh, four of them uh, here. Actually, if you put one more, you can have five, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So all instructions can be run together in parallel. So there's no problem, uh, okay? So what is a single cycle versus a pipeline execution? For example, let's say you have a single cycle. You will need 800 picosecond to do all the five micro instructions. Uh, so you have see uh, these are log word, register one, 100, zero, register zero. Uh. Uh, later, I will show you the MIPS. Uh. So this is a real MIPS uh, micro uh, assembly language. Uh. So you need 800 picosecond for all of the instruction, okay? What if you implement this pipeline execution? So when you implement the pipeline uh, instruction, this is what you will, can get. You can actually uh, complete all the three instructions within one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a one, four, zero, zero, because they can compare to this two, two, four, zero, zero, because they can. So these, there are huge, improvement to the microprocessor speed and performance. So now I want you to do this uh, exercise, the speed up. Okay, uh, I want you to measure the speed up. Uh, don't worry, after this exercise, I will give you some rest. Consider the unpipe line processor. So you have an unpipe line processor. Assume that it has the one nano clock cycles nanosecond clock cycles, and you use four cycles for arithmetic logic unit and branches, and five cycles for memory operations. Assume the relative frequency of this operation is 40, 20, and 40, okay? So you have the, uh, okay, ALU branch and memory, you have 40, 20, 40, yeah? So now, suppose that the, that due to clock skill and setup, uh, clock skill, uh, you can go and search what is clock skill. Uh, uh, we, uh, this is about the digital electronic. Uh, because uh, when sometimes the signal takes some time to reach uh, different digital devices uh, at different times. Uh, that's why they have some skill there. Uh, so pipelining the processor at 0 0.2 nanosecond to the overhead of the clock. So you will spend some time at the uh, pipelining register. So ignoring any latency impact, how much speed up in the instruction execution rate will we get from a pipeline? Okay. Now average execution time for us on pipeline. So this is the on pipeline. Yeah? Okay. You need one nanosecond for forty percent plus twenty percent multiplied four complex uh, cycles, uh, and then forty percent multiplied five cycles. So now you have 4.4 nanosecond you use. What if you have the pipeline? What if you have pipeline? So the average instruction will be 1.2 because adding this 0.2 nanosecond of the overhead to the clock. So you can use one nanosecond to implement uh, a lot of operation, okay? Compared to the uh, this one, four cycle for the uh, memory, uh, sorry, four cycle for the op ALU and also branches and five cycle for memory operation. So in conclusion, you only need 1.2 nanosecond. There are 3.7 times performance improvement. Okay. Yeah. So this is about the speed up. Any question about this exercise? Any question you want to ask me?
Regarding this exercise, later for the next hour, we will be able to study the tutorial. Any question you want to ask me? Uh, let, see. let me see. Yeah. 90 minutes, yeah, very good. Show me also says 360 minutes. Very good. Long Yao Ting said, if your washing machine and dryer is big enough to handle four loads, it's still 90 minutes. Yeah, you're right. You are right. Correct. Long Yao Ting, you are saying the right thing. Huh? This is about the. Uh, when, when we talk about this, uh, uh, you are thinking uh, very, you are, your, your thinking is quite advanced. Uh. We haven't learned that stock yet. Uh. So basically, we are talking about pipelining. Okay, let's say you want to make your washing machine big enough. Uh. Okay, what they do is they have the core. Core. Multi-core computer. Uh, this is what happened to your computer. Uh, for example, my computer only has two cores. Uh. Two cores. Uh, and then two tracks. Okay. Uh, this is my... Because my computer that I'm, I'm used to write... Uh, it's actually uh, N Celeron computers, which I bought it for 880 ringgits. Uh. Uh, you, uh, during those time, uh, I have an offer uh, from, I, I, I have an offer from Lazada, then 800 ringgit, I, I bought this computer. Uh, but it's very powerful, uh, I think. Uh, except that if you want to play game, they cannot lie, uh, you have to take some time. Uh. So I have four core. So this is a big washing machine. Okay, this big washing machine, has to be implemented when you have multi-core. This is called washing machine. Yeah, you're right. If they can do this also, it's very fast. They don't need pipeline. But if they have pipeline and also four core, then they can do 16 things together. They can uh, accomplish 16 loads together. Yeah, you're right, Long Yao Ting. Yeah. Okay, now let's uh, complete these chapters. Uh. Okay, comments about the pipelining. So good news is, Multiple instructions are being processed at the same time. You can process multiple instructions using the line system. Uh, this works because stages are isolated by registers. So every time you do something, then the result will store inside pipeline register or ledgers. Then best case speed up is five. In this case, five is uh, the end is five. Up. But the bad news is there are instructions interfere with each other. Okay. Ah, that means they caught the cause the hazard. Ah. We have the safety hazards here. In the labs, if you do something wrong, then you have hazards. But in instruction also same, you have hazards. For example, let me ask you about this A, A2, uh, AL2, H. Okay, and then I want to move, uh, move BL, AL into BL. Eh. Okay, for this instruction, this two uh, assembly language, eh, if you use pipelining, what, what is the hazard that you have? Okay, you wait for 2H to transfer here, then only AL to transfer here. That means you must definitely wait until uh, micro instruction 5, right? Micro instruction 5, uh, right back. Micro instruction 5, right back. Complete. Then only you can start to move this into here, right? Uh, so this is the problem. That's why from here, you have to hot the pipeline system. You can have to hot the whole thing. So then after, after this uh, instruction complete, only this one can continue. That's why when you run this one using your computer, your computer have to stop the pipeline. The pipeline has to stop first. Uh, they cannot run. Because if you directly run, uh, the AL might not contain 2H. It will contain other values. So you have a hazard. Let's say it's, if the computer is used inside an aeroplane, Aerocom plane also have a lot of microprocessors, right? Uh, then suddenly you want to uh, you want to uh, go up, then say go left. Uh, then uh, finish up, right? Has it right? So example, different instruction may need the same piece of array. Okay, you need the same piece of array uh, in the same clock cycles. So let's say, for example, uh, what is the meaning of this? Uh? Uh, for example, I have moved my here. Then uh, uh, I, I want to move AL by H. So both of them also using AH, AL. Sorry, AL. So what can I do? I have to wait this one finish first, right? Because it use the same register, right? I cannot do, do two things together. Then at the end, what happened? I also don't know. Okay. 
And also the first one is first example. Second example is uh, this one. Instruction may require a result produced by an earlier instruction that is not yet complete. Okay. So that's all for these chapters. So any question you can let me know before we go for 15 minutes. Any question? I believe today you have learned a lot of computer things. Huh? Now you know what is inside computers, right? You have used it for so many years. Yeah. Any question? Anyone can turn on your mic to speak if you want. All right, at the text box. Okay, if no question, then I will allow you to, okay, different of call and tracks. Huh? Different of call and tracks. Huh? Okay, the call is basically, uh, call is something like this. Huh? Okay, this is a microprocessor. Let's say you have the uh, my N, 4000 uh, and 4000 uh, computer. So the call mean there are two different processors. Okay, two different processors. Inside the processor, there are two, two tracks uh, like this uh, two tracks. So uh, error, error is over here. So call means different processor. Uh, call a uh, different call. Uh, yeah. So in order to learn this, I think uh, it's a uh, quite a complex one. Uh. So uh, maybe later we will learn a uh, more. Uh, but generally, call is a uh, this is call uh, call track is inside the call. Uh, this is a track. Uh. Yeah, this is actually the track. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Very good question. Uh, inside the call, there are some tracks. So any tracks means that you can. Uh, to me, uh, tracks that can still uh, implement uh, run one instruction uh, together uh, inside call, they have the track. Let's say for the Intel i7, uh, sometimes they have uh, eight call, four tracks, uh, something like this. So one call can run four instructions together. So 32 instructions at one time. Uh. But still, they are subjected to this pipeline main hazards. Uh. Yeah, with some instructions depends on each other. Uh. Only those parallel instructions can be executed after. So, uh, thank you. So, thank you, Chong Yi, for asking this question. But if not, then I don't know uh, whether you understand, you, you, have, uh, you understand this or not. Okay, very good. So, next one, we are going to have some rest first. Okay. Uh, before we have some rest, then you can actually uh, open your tutorial. Okay. We will rest until 3.17. 3.17, so you can open your, uh, for those who are hardworking enough, you can actually uh, turn on this tutorial tree. Okay, tutorial tree. So later we'll discuss about this. So I will turn off my uh, camera. So tree, acting now. Uh, okay, we'll meet again. Thank you.
Uh, very good afternoon, to class again. Uh, five minutes has passed so fast, right? So, uh, so the 15 minutes has already passed, so we are coming back to this uh, tutorial tree. So I want you to start to look at this tutorial tree. After that, uh, please write your answers to the chatbot. Uh, is everyone here already? I can see 30, 32. So minus 20, uh, minus 3 becomes 29. Okay, now let's look at this uh, question. Okay. Uh, I'm actually at the other, other computers here. So tutorial directory, assume an operation, let's say, for example, move at H to H, can be divided into one, 10, or 50 pipeline stages. Now they want to put into micro instructions, many micro instructions with no overhead. And the pipeline can be kept full. Okay, so we assume that there's no overhead of the pipeline registers, and also the pipeline can keep full. There's no uh, memory, there's no hazards that are happening. Sir. So the first question A, what degree of pipelining would provide the optimal latency? Which one? One, 10, or 50? Uh, okay, let me let me uh, use the pool, sir. Let me, uh, I want to start a pool. Uh. Do not answer first, yeah? So, what degree of pipeline to provide the optimal latency? Okay, first, the answer is one. Second, then the one fifty. Okay, so I launched already. So please uh, answer your pool. Ah, uh, yeah. What is the what degree to pipelining would provide the optimal latency? Okay, what's the which one will provide the latency? Optimal latency. Okay, yeah, start uh, start to see some. We start to answer that. Let us see, either 1, 10, or 50. Okay, I'll give you uh, maybe two minutes. Okay, you can answer uh, which one? Provide optimal latency. Which one, one, 10, or 50? For example, uh, no overhead uh, of the pipeline registers. Okay. So let's say uh, you have no overhead uh, of the pipeline registers. So which one? If you don't have the access to the pool, uh, you can actually, uh, yeah, uh, show me either 10, 1 or 10 or 50, one of them. Yeah, it's inside the uh, Jamboard. Uh, sorry, it's inside the pool. Not Jamboard, yeah, inside the pool. So you can answer inside the pool. One of them, yeah. So which one provide the optimal latency? Optimal latency means uh, will be faster. Sir. Which one is faster? Sir? 110 or 50? Which one is fastest? Let's say you can do one micro instruction or 10 micro instructions or 50 micro instructions. So which one will give you the fastest? Another 30 seconds, uh, so I will give you the answer.
Okay, 10 more seconds. You can guess one. Uh. Yeah, just guessing me. Uh. Five more seconds. Okay, I will end the pool with now, yeah? Okay, uh, there are 23 works, uh, so everyone can see your, uh, can see the result. Uh. So most of you select 12 works. Uh. Uh, sorry, 12 works select 50. So let me show you the answer. So which one should give you the optimal means the better, the best. Optimal means best. Best, uh, let us see means the best speed. Uh. Okay, answer is 50 stages of the pipeline will provide 50 extra throughput. Okay, so uh, this is the answer. Okay, uh, so 50 times the throughput. Uh. So very good, uh, very good uh, for your try. So most of you have guessed it correctly. Uh. So don't worry, uh, this is just uh, through the learning process. Uh. So let's say if you have 50 micro instructions for one instruction, so it'll get very fast if you use pipeline. Okay, very good. Uh. So next one, next question. Okay, same question here. What degree of pipelining will provide the lowest optimal latency? Uh, let me let me give you the who uh, this time yeah create a who okay also the same three answer one then and 100. So, okay, you may, may start to answer. Uh, two minutes. Which one provides the lowest optimal latency? Means which one is the slowest? One, 10, or 50? They still have one minute. Okay, I will end the pool in the uh, then it's again that. You can guess if you want. Which one will provide the lowest optimal latency? Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so this is the result. Yeah, very good. So everyone choose one. Huh? Yeah, you can see the result there. So what degree would provide the lowest optimal latency? Of course, it's one pipeline stage, which is one, uh, same as the unpipeline um, version, is one x the throughput. So one stage will provide the lower latency. Latency means late. Uh, the key, the root word is late. Latency means uh, how late, uh, how much is the duration, okay? Okay, so very good. Just give a big applause to everyone. Okay, very good. And now, uh, third question, same same question here. We have a uh, 110 and 50. Lah. Why shouldn't we use a million pipeline stages? Uh, let's say if we have the million pipeline, then it will be, uh, why, do, why shouldn't we use a million pipeline stages if an operation can be divided into a million steps, even if we can keep the pipeline full? Anyone, uh, can you give me any, uh, any uh, answers? Suggest any answers? 
take many resources. Okay, very good. Good try, uh, Chong Yi. Uh, later we see answers whether it's, it's this answer. Any other answers? Why don't we divide it into 100 me? Sorry, millions. Yes. Take many resources, uh, it makes sense. Uh, many resources. We don't want to design so many <laughs> cut down registers, right? Cost hazards, yeah, true also. Young there. Any other uh, answers? Latency. Uh, yeah, it will cost latency if it it's too much. Uh, why? Uh, unnecessary. Yeah, of course, uh, unnecessary. Uh, because right now our computer is fast enough, right? And overlapping. Yeah, all these answers are correct. Shinsen, Chongyi, Munchang. Okay. Let us uh, see how do we put the words together. Okay, let's see. Okay, the overhead of the pipeline latch will be too high. So for example, let's say you design 1 million steps. For all steps, you have to put in one pipeline uh, register. So pipeline register or the latch will be too high. You have to put 1 million. So when the instruction goes through 1 million latches, it will take a few hours already, right? So we will spend too much time to move move data relative to computing, okay? You, know, you just move the data from one to another. So that's why from the previous question in the lecture notes, there is a 0 0.2 pipeline uh, lectures, right? Uh, time spent on overhead. So this this one will we also count in the time required. Okay, very good. So everyone uh, get the idea, lah, okay? So next. Okay, now we have this second question. For all following question, we assume that uh, pipelines contain five stages. Uh, this one is a very standard one, uh, five stages. Instruction fetch, instruction decode, uh, execution, uh, memory access, and wrap back. So also each stage require one clock cycle. Okay, each one of them uh, require one clock cycle means that one instruction needs five cycles, uh, five clock cycles, okay? All memory reference key in cache. That means that all the memory reference in cache, you do not need to go to memory and fetch it. So you do need the extra cycle to call the memory, sorry, to decode the memory, then you get the uh, channel the memory back because memory is too far away, right? That's why the time needed also maybe longer. Lah. So all in cache. Cache is something inside the microprocessor. So you can access it very fast within the cycle, following is the program segment should be processed. So what is this programming language? Anyone can guess? What type of programming language is this? Load word R4 100. Should be, which one? Anyone can guess? Okay, let me see. Huh? Let's see if I... Okay, the day I, I think I have shown you the spin, QT spin, okay? Let me uh, go to the QT spin. This one is actually the MIPS simulator for the MIPS processor. I'm going to show you the, the instructions there, but no matter how, uh, I think it should be a MIPS. Uh, yeah, let me show you the example. Then you decide whether it's a MIPS or not. Uh, let's speak a while. Okay, so uh, let's speak a while first. So now, let us see the uh, MIPS. Okay, this will be the instruction. Uh. So as you can see, a uh, MIPS instruction is something like this. Let me show look about. Any example that I can do? Hello world. Okay, for your information, all programming language, including assembly, uh, we create this hello world instruction. Yeah, you can see in all the programming languages, uh, I don't know why, maybe this is just a culture. Okay, hello world instruction. So you can see that 
uh, in MIPS, uh, basically, uh, you can see the instruction is always like this. Load word, register number four. So you go ahead and see the number four, register number four. Mm, dollar sign four, uh, register number four, and then zero twenty nine. Okay, so after that, add uh, integer unsigned, uh, register number five, register number nine, register number four. So this meaning uh, add the A1 and SP4. Okay, same thing. Uh, so you just add over here. Uh, okay, so add two things into here. So 429 and come to dollar five. Uh, okay, so this is basically the MIPS instruction. Uh, so for computer students, so you must be able to uh, understand that uh, no matter what assembly language, uh, uh, even though it's MIPS, uh, Microsoft uh, X0, X6, Microsoft Assembler language, everything uh, you must know a little bit, uh, not that everything. Uh. So here, you add two integer arrays. Load word means you load the 400 immediate. Load 400 immediate into register number four, like what you see in the MIPS uh, processor. For MIPS processor, basically you have many register. Okay, you have many register. So you can see, load four something. So you load the register four, R4 over here, uh, with the 400 immediate value. Okay, immediate value. Huh? You load the 400 into immediate value here, and then you load. Uh, this is a label, uh, like you see. Load the word 0R4. What's the meaning of this? Load the first operand. Okay, so 0 as a base. Uh, okay, R4, you load into this one, R1. Then you load 400 R4. So this the base is 400. Okay, uh, R2. And then you add integer R2 and R1 to the R3. After that, you store, so, sorry, uh, store the R4 into R3. Okay, store the result. Okay, very good. So we have to look at the manual, then only we know uh, why they store the R4 into R3. Okay, now R3, R4. Okay, now sub R4, R4, 4. Calculate the address of the next elements and branch. Uh, branch if uh, not zero. Uh. Okay, so this instruction, uh, uh, later if you are interested, you can go and see the manual of this. How can they do it? Uh? Okay, uh, let me view the help first. Uh. This uh, different instruction actually has a source and destination operand differently. Uh. Let me see uh, what is this. Uh? Okay, so supposingly if you add already, so you Store what you should store it here, right? Let me see. Yeah, Q spin. Okay, never mind. So, uh, later we only understand. Uh, okay, later I explain again. So, now calculate how many clock cycle will take to execution of this segment on the regular non line architecture. Now we don't have architecture. Show the calculations. How many do we need? So, load the Word R4 400. Now uh, you load R1, this one, load R2 uh, 400, and then uh, add R3, R1 plus R2. Okay, then store the R3. Okay, 0 R4. Then subtract the R4 with 4. Okay, so now what is the how many address? Let's guess how many address. Uh, okay, you can calculate first. Uh, okay, basically, uh, let me show you the idea is like this. Uh. Here is 400, right? So every time they subtract 4, uh, means they will run 100 times uh, for this L1 until here. 1 is not 0. Uh, if let's say the R4 is not 0, then you can branch to L1, label 1. So you have one instruction. Okay, so here you branch 100 times. So you have the 101 uh, instructions. Uh. So let's calculate how many clock cycles will take execution of this segment. 
on the regular non-part line architectures. So let's do this. After that, right at the let, let me show you. Okay, assembly overlapping assembly. Yeah, assembly. Yes. Okay, now what's the question? Last assembly. Yeah, it's assembly language. Yeah, correct. Uh, but it's a mixed assembly language. And then each instruction has its own format, or not easy to do, also. Yeah. So later we see uh, at open. I feel like, I feel like, uh, okay, let me. We are cool, uh, cool, same thing, uh, we are cool. So, how many block sizes are required? For to run to run this restriction. Okay, this is a loop, uh, loop yeah. Okay, so option one, option one is which we, we do not how many, uh, so let me give a less than 20. Uh. Okay, uh, more less than 100. So that let's say 100, and then more than 21, okay, or more than more than 100. Okay, let me we have two. Uh, everyone can start to calculate how many clock cycles are required. Because each stage will require one clock cycle. So one instruction is five cycles. So how many uh, clock cycles are there? I give you two minutes, uh, three minutes to do this calculation. So yeah, one instruction requires five stages. One stage requires one clock cycle. Now you are having the load instruction. One stock zero, uh, four to L1 for 100 times. Okay, which one is the answer? Okay, let's try it. I feel like the third line, oh, sorry, the fourth line and the fifth line uh, uh, is quite meaningless, right? After you have done something, then after that you use it. <laughs> but never mind, it's just a question. Uh, they just want to calculate the number of clock cycles. Uh. Okay, another one minute. How many of them? They load 100 times. Then after that, each time got six instructions, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, multiply 100, 600. Add one, become 601. Each one has five uh, micro instructions. Five stages uh, in this question. So total, how many clock cycles? Yeah, I'm going to end the full uh, in 10 seconds. Huh? You can try to get into one. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, I end the full. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, most of you guess more than 100. Uh. Okay, very good. Yeah, very good. So, uh, what is the exact value that you have already calculated? I, I know every, everyone will scared to be getting a wrong answer, right? But definitely it's more than 100, right? Yeah, everyone will know that. So, here you see lot the uh, R4 is 400, so every time you subtract R4 by 4. This is the destination, is source, source. Subtract R4 by 4, then put into R4. But this one, uh, I'm a bit funny why they want to run this instruction. Uh, because you add already this two into here. Then after that, you saw the result. Hmm, this is a very good question. Uh. Never mind, uh, let me, okay, let us uh, go to see the answer. Solution is, you have the one instruction over here, one. Then you come into a loop. Then subtract four. Uh, four hundred. You subtract four. After that, you become zero. Uh, at the end. Uh. so total you have one hundred times. So one plus six multiply four hundred. Okay, uh, four hundred. Uh, and then divided by four. So six multiply one hundred. Uh, and then multiply five clock cycles. So definitely you need more than one hundred clock cycles, which is three thousand five clock cycles. So very good for the, uh, all of you who have answered correctly. Very good. Okay. Any question you have for this question? Okay. If no, uh, then uh, are we, is it possible for us to see okay, this one? Okay. Let, uh, okay. This one. Second question. Okay, so now, uh, never mind, uh, let us go through, discuss other things. Uh. Question two, you need more uh, lectures before you can do it. Uh. Yeah, because this instruction is quite difficult. Uh. Basically, uh, the mix, uh, the processor actually has many registers. This is a mix. Uh, Programming language. Usually, uh, for MIPS assembly language, this one is the destination. The first one is destination, usually only. Uh, and then these two actually is a source. So it means it add the integer from here and add to four, then put into five. So this is the meaning. Uh, okay. There are many of them. Uh, so if you you are very interest, interested to learn this uh MIPS, uh, you can actually go online and find your own materials. Uh. Uh, we, we can discuss a little, we won't be able to discuss everything. Uh. So now, I am going to show you a little bit of the assembly language. Uh, let me see what assembly language do I have uh, for this subject. Basically, I'm going to show you the Intel assembly code. Yeah. I want to show you some Intel assembly code so that when I explain to you some assemb when we have some uh, assembly language tutorial, we will understand. No? Uh, we won't be so uh, frightened uh, when we have this uh, assembly language uh, tutorial. So let me explain a little bit. Uh. But if you need to know more, uh, it's better for you to study, uh, learn, learn, uh, learn more. Uh, okay. Okay, so this is actually the Intel assembly language. It's our our the computer that you use right now. Okay, this is the integer calculator uh, for the addition and also subtraction. You can only take one digit input and produce answer between minus nine to nineteen. Uh, so before you can write the assembly language, you need to. Uh, this is for MSM, Microsoft Assembler. So model large, uh, this one just to show them, you need a large model and the stack you put 1000 H. So they will assign a stack to you, 1000 uh, hexa number. Okay, and then you can start to write your code. Okay, after that, uh, this is the code. So you, uh, you can see that uh, if you want to start, uh, basically you have to cut the start dot dot. Okay, start double colon. Okay, start double colon. Then the first thing uh, you want to program is actually this one. You want to print display the hello. Okay, 
hello, welcome to add and subtract calculators. Okay, so what you do is you move the address of the data to the AX. So this is the this is actually the source operand. This is the destination operand. So move the address of the data to AX. Then you move the AX register 16B into DS. Okay, DS uh, segment register. Then after that, you move the offset message to DX. Okay, this is different. Uh. This is a DS segment register, data segment register. You move AX to DS. Then after that, you call puts. Uh, call puts. Uh. This is command. Uh. Uh, this is semicolon is command. You don't care about this. Uh. After you call puts, then you will display a message. Hello, welcome to add and subtract calculator. So where is this add data? Add data is actually uh, okay inside here. Direct uh, add data is direct here. Add data. Okay, add data is here. Message one. Hello, welcome to add and subtract calculator, and then a dollar sign here. And then at the end, you put 13 10. 13 10 means uh in computer is uh carriage return, means it's enter uh, the next time. Okay, so this is defined database byte. Okay, message one database byte, then all the H, big H. Hello, uh, comma, space, welcome to add and subtract calculator. So this is the end. Uh, the dollar sign means end. This one means, uh, mm, this one means enter. So they will get the data address, uh, direct address. Then after that, uh, so they call the puts. Then they will be able to print this message number one. Uh, okay, uh, message number one, the most DX. Offset message one. Okay, call the puts. Where is the puts? Puts, uh, let me see. Uh, puts is here. Puts is the move AH 9H interrupt 21H. So this is the subroutine to print a string. Okay, print a string. So for, for this uh, example, they will be able to move AH to 9H, then they interrupt 21H, then they return. Uh, this is actually the assembly language to print a string. Uh, if you are interested, you can actually uh, actually uh, study this. Uh, then after that, they print the second message. They move the uh, segment register to this. Segment register is data. Then after that, DX. So this is actually uh, offset. Uh, offset uh, addressing is an addressing mode, uh, but using offset using the base addressing mode. Okay, so after that, they call the puts, then they display enter for addition, as for subtraction, then they call the get C. For Intel assembly language, the get C is like this. If you want to get a character, so you can actually move BL to AL, then move AX, this one, call, sorry, sorry, get this pair. Let me see where it gets here, not, not this, sorry. Get C. Okay, you can see it's move a h1, interrupt 21h. So most of them will use the 21h. So 21h will stop a while uh, and then uh, ask your computer to key in a character. Okay, after that, what they do? After that, they call uh, get the C, then they move PL, get the data from AL, then they compare PL with A. Jump, if A, uh, if you put, you in the A, so they will do the addition function. If compare the BL equals to S, then they will jump equal to F subtraction function. So after that, uh, they will move AX 4C00H, the interrupt the D1H, means they exit the program. Okay, so basically this is the assembly code that you can use to perform the integer calculation. Uh, yeah. So any question you want to ask? Let, uh, this is Intel assembly language. So there are many subroutine here. Yeah. This is a machine language, uh, sorry, the language for the computer, yeah? Assembly language. Any question you want to ask before we stop here? Anyone has any question? So far so good, I don't say. Okay, very good. So maybe next time if you have time chance, then I only I will show you uh, 
uh, how to do the assembler, uh, and then I uh, will call. We will produce an exe file, then we run it from there. Uh, assembly cumulative sum uh, 344. So, Jing are you asking for the which one? Which question? This one. Uh, this is just a sum. It's a add, uh, 3 plus 4 equals to 9. Uh, oh, sorry, 4 equals to 7. Uh, like this. Okay, Chongyi said, Sir, the assembly language used in the tutorial is from which model? Any code syntax available? Uh, to me, the assembly language used in the tutorial is mixed because uh, we are dealing with very general computer architecture. So, any sample, uh, last time I learned already uh, this mix, uh, actually, we have to refer to the uh, to the manual. Uh. Okay, mix, we can cut the uh, mix assembly and all assembly language you have to refer to manual language. Okay. So uh, if you are interested, you can actually download the, uh, this one, go into Miss Assembly Language. Uh, you can download one of them. Then you can uh, start to see all the, all the assembly language. Yeah. Uh, programming model, ready assembler. Okay. So, okay. This one don't have. Uh. Okay, so you can learn from here. Uh. Okay, you can uh, search online and then learn a little bit the uh, programming language. It's a mix. Uh. Last time I have a manual, uh, little introduction uh, should be here. Uh, you can search online a bit. I will also, uh, I can provide the link uh, later. Actually, basically, you can search, uh, search online, then you can see. Let me, this one is, okay, put document. Okay, let me show you what is MIPS, yeah. Because we are going to deal with many programming language, uh, MIPS and everything. So for your information, MIPS is actually having the destination operand as, as the first operand. So, uh, let's wait a while uh, while it uh, turn up. Uh. Okay, any good syntax? Uh, yeah, we are waiting, uh, waiting for you to turn up. Okay, so any more question you have? While we're waiting for this, uh, which turn up? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I have to go to the document, then they modify. Okay, so I will open the extra bag. Open with. Okay, let me show you the some of the uh, syntax uh, of this MIPS programming language. Let's wait a while. Okay, so this is an introduction to the MIPS assembly language. So basically, uh, for the syntax, uh, you can actually refer to this document. Uh, uh, the program is the program that I've already shown you. So you can download uh, QT Spin. You can download freely from uh, online. Then the syntax is uh, okay. all inside the uh, internet. Uh. There are many syntax over here. For example, you want to learn this, uh, it will take you uh, one year. Yeah. Yeah, these are all the syntax. Uh. Let's say Lee. Lee uh dollar sign V zero comma four means you Lee. Okay, load the integer four into V zero. Okay, uh, this is what it means. Uh, prompt for the integer to enter. So la, uh, now you have to li la li la. Li is to get the four, then la, uh, load array, uh, a not prompt. It's the message, then your system call, it will prompt for an integer to enter. Just like the programming language I discussed just now, uh, the li will actually, li and la there, we actually get this prompt. Uh, please enter an integer. 
just exactly like my Intel. Huh? After that, they will show. Uh, please enter an integer. After that, Lee, we not five. This is the call. They will get an integer. Okay, they store the value to the S0. Then from there, they output the text. Okay, you have enter, uh, you have typed the number, what is the number? So this is actually the syntax. So you are interested, you can download, uh, you can search, and then you download this one. This one is, the syntax is uh, Introduction to MIPS Assembly Language Programming by Gettybird College. Okay, so you can download from there. Lah. Okay, uh, I think it's a free one. Lah. So there are many free resources, open educational resources that you can download. Uh, if you're interested, you can study a few assembly language. In future, when you fail with this, then you are happy. Lah. Then you know everything. Ah. Yeah. So any more questions you want to ask before we end our class today because it's already late uh, in four. So any questions? Any question you can let me know. Uh, any question? If no question, then we can uh, end our class. That will put everything uh, to the online. Okay, so, all right, thank you, sir. Okay, Chung Yi, thank you. So, so far, so good, Yao Ting. Okay, uh, we will end our class here. We are, it's now 3.59. On this Friday, we will continue on pipeline. Uh, and then we will do the tutorials and also study a little bit assembly language. Yeah. So, all right, thank you very much. Okay, bye bye. Okay, see you. On so, everyone, stay at home. Uh, keep safe. Uh. Okay, bye. Okay, bye bye.